Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. And in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about React Spring itself, why we chose this library for this series, and why I feel that React Spring is one of the most advanced yet simple at the same time animating libraries to come out for React. This thing is so powerful and so cool. So let's dive into it now. Okay. So in this series, we're going to be covering animations and we're primarily going to be doing so through this library React Spring. Now, a good portion of this video here is going to be talking about why we're using React Spring. And then we're going to dive into React Spring's documentation just to check out some of their examples to really further hammer home in the why React Spring. Now, we also have some other libraries that we'll be talking about like React Transition Group and I'm going to be discussing about why we're using uh, this library over other things like React Transition Group or some others that you'll see here. So let's get into it a little bit first about why React Spring and more specifically, why physics-based animations? Because a lot of other libraries that use animations in React rely on CSS changes. If you've come from another framework, maybe Vue or Angular, you're used to the whole uh, adding a class on enter and appear and just allowing CSS to do everything with transitions. Now I'm a huge fan of CSS transitions and I certainly am not going to stop using CSS transitions in any sort of way. However, React Spring makes it possible to do something that you cannot do with CSS. And now that is physics-based animations. Now, if you're coming from the world of durations and easing curves, then this is going to feel foreign to you at first. We're no longer going to be talking about durations or easing curves, but we're more or less going to be talking about actual physical properties, of which we'll get into in a little bit, where Spring here, just like some other popular React transition libraries, it doesn't handle durations here, what it does is it thinks about animations in terms of general physical properties, the way things really work in the real world, right? If you drop something, uh, it doesn't say, hey, what's the, the amount of time it's going to take to hit the ground? And what's the easing curve for that? No, it's going to allow physics to decide. And I think that's one of the reasons why React Spring does it so nicely. Not only that, but it makes it very accessible. Now, I'll compare this to React Motion and some of these other libraries in just a minute here. We'll talk about why React Spring is definitely better suited. Now, another huge plus to using something like React Spring is that a lot of native animation libraries, whether that's iOS or Android, use physics-based animations themselves. So moving from something like that to something like this, or uh, it's just a way that is going to feel a little bit better. Everyone knows how nice the animations can feel on an iPhone, uh, simply just because they're all physics-based. Okay, so let's dive into the documentation because with React Spring, some of the proof is in the pudding here, and we're gonna head to React Spring at react-spring.io. Now, one of the things that's most I don't want to say shocking because it's not exactly shocking, but most exciting about React Spring is how so many of the items in their documentation are definitely show me rather than tell me. So let's draw your attention to this logo right here on the React Spring homepage. Now, so many other tools and libraries would take this time to just have a static logo. Not React Spring. What we have here is an actual usable demo. For instance, if we hover over this ball and click and drag, you'll see not only, <laughs> this is it's just so brilliant. Not only can we click and drag and move this ball around, but it's stuck inside of this 3D spring and we even have the masking and everything going on. This should make you very excited. The fact that the documentation goes through this level of detail here. Watch what happens when I let go of it. Look at that wobble. Now, these are the properties of this thing that allow it to behave like this. If this was a heavier ball or it had more dampening on it or something, it wouldn't be bouncing so much. So we don't need to think about this as being bouncy animations necessarily. However, this animation is made exceedingly bouncy. And check this out. Uh, this is just really cool. Imagine trying to do something like this with CSS. It's not going to happen. And now let's come down here to the introduction where we can see, again, more demos. Now, what's amazing about these demos is they're all real. If we click any of them, it's going to take us to a code sandbox. So React Spring does a great job with showing you real libraries. Now, for as much as I love some of these demos, look at that. Oof, look at that. Yeah, again, 
this is just amazing. Imagine trying to do this with CSS. But again, as much as I love some of these demos, I can't necessarily say I love in which the manner in which they're presented. That said, look at how concise this is. We have just a little bit of animation code here. And while it is scary, well, it won't be scary after this series. The actual JSX to make this happen is really pretty simple. We're simply having an array of pages and we're mapping over them and the animation does the rest. That's it. Wow. Imagine if these were divs or components or anything. Wouldn't it be any different than this? So as you can see, the basics of getting up and running with React Spring might not be super duper easy, but the amount of stuff you can accomplish with React Spring is really just incredible. Look at this. Wow. And again, if you're if this scares you, don't worry. This will not scare you by the end of this. We'll be doing really cool stuff with React Spring by the end of this series, along with really practical things too. Don't feel like a tarot card deck here is going to be the prime example. So that's all we're going to be basically covering in terms of React Spring, uh, their basic documentation here. But I highly recommend just pawing through the examples to start with and seeing some of this stuff in action. Now, again, these docs are great, but I always feel like they can be better. And I hope this series is going to provide a way to make some of this stuff more accessible because I really, really love this library. Now, let's get into some of the competitors. I guess you could call them competitors. First up is React Transition Group. This is React's own transition library. And this is going to function like pretty much any other transition library you might have used in other libraries like Angular or Vue. And if you've never used something like this, what it's basically doing is going to be changing CSS classes on mount and unmount before they mount and unmount. Now, that's a wonderful thing. But if we were to look at the code that it takes to get a simple transition for opacity up and running, entering, exiting, then defining our style, then defining a duration, then wrapping everything into transition, having a render prep, and then the div pass in the style. To me, this is not that elegant. In fact, they just made a huge change to this library, uh, and it used to be quite a bit easier. So I'm not quite sure what's going on in the state of this library, but I really don't feel like this is the easiest, fastest, best way to get up and running with animations anymore like it has in the past. Now, if you're very comfortable with CSS animations, this might be something still worth looking to dive into. It's a very widely used library. I actually use it on level up tutorials myself, but again, I find myself reaching for something like React Spring more often. And I should mention that if using durations is a reason why you might choose this over something like React Spring. Uh, fear not, you can use durations in React Spring as well if you'd like to. Now, next up is React Motion. Now, React Motion uh, takes the crown as being the first to truly solve this physics-based animation problem within React, and they did an amazing job with it. However, the big problem with React Motion is just how insanely confusing the API can be. Now, experienced motion users might actually take offense to me saying that. Uh, however, let me tell you, it is not an easy library to get up and running. The examples, the documentation, it's all okay, but the amount of code that it takes and sort of the obtuse nature of what the code you're going to be writing is going to look is just going to send your head into headache zone. Uh, this is a wonderful library. It can accomplish a lot. That said, React Spring does everything that this library can do. And in my opinion, it does it better, more elegant, easier for you to understand. That said, it is a really wonderful library. Uh, so I highly recommend it, at least checking out the documentation, seeing that this exists. Again, React Spring is certainly my choice if you're going for uh, both ease of use and power. Now, next up is Pose, and Pose is an amazing library here. It's very style components-esque. This is definitely my number two React animation library. And not to say I don't really love this library, I just happen to like the approach of React Spring just a little bit better. Now, this library does often think about things in durations, 
Um, it does really nice basic defaults out of the box. You can build custom animations really nice and easily. You think about it as different states and then you pass in state into a pose property. It takes a very different approach to React animations. That's actually something that's quite shocking about all four of these libraries. This is actually quite shocking, uh, is that they all take an approach to animations which is nearly totally different. Uh, this actually creates essentially components and allows us to pass in props to change their states. Again, this is really, really a cool library when I highly recommend checking out, to be entirely honest, the dragging interface in uh, pop motion pose is certainly better than React Spring. That said, I like the rest of Spring a little bit better. So this takes an approach like this where React Motion still has a render prop approach that's all physics based and with a lot of interpolation going on. React Transition Group also takes a render prop approach, but is doing it a little bit more CSS based, uh, duration based specifically. And React Spring is certainly the most modern of these tools by using a brand new hooks interface. And you can see to get a basic opacity transition, the same basic opacity transition, look at how many lines of code this took here. First, look at how many lines of code this took here. And that should be enough to convince you because not only are we getting that power of the physics-based animations, but we're also getting the ease of using hooks and the ease of a nice, concise syntax. Okay, so this is React Animations and this is React Spring. Now, I will want to talk about versions very specifically as we get going in the next video because React Spring is a library that tends to change somewhat frequently. I want to make sure we're all on the same page here. So thank you so much for starting animating React. And let's dive into some code as we figure out what the heck is going on with React Spring.